Good uh, evening. Yeah, am I audible to everyone? Yes, it's now audible. Yes, ma'am. Okay, because I was not speaking anything. <laughs> That's how the message that there is no audio. Yeah, I was just waiting for people to join in. I think there are, I think, 20 odd people here already. So, are we supposed to begin with as many, or should we wait for more people to join? Any idea? I mean, anybody can help. Should we begin? Yes, we can start. Okay, great. So um, I would request people to switch on their cameras so that I can see you all. And today's topic is about appearance. So might as well. Great. Nice to have you all back. And I think there was a one week break um, because of some conference or something. Uh, last week, there were no classes for opportune, I believe, right? But uh, good that we are starting with a topic which is not in sequence with anything that we did before. I think Priyanka had covered with you all first impressions and uh, uh, something related to body language itself. But uh, today I'll be covering more of the styling and grooming part. So that is, again, very important when it comes to public speaking, because even on stage, you have to be extremely cautious about what you're wearing, how you're wearing it, so that your, um, you know, the concentration is not on uh, adjusting yourself with your clothes, but rather on the speech or the topic that you're taking. Correct. So uh, it, it is more uh, related to all that aspect. Uh, with regards to public speaking okay so your appearance in general and i think these tips will even help you in your normal working life wherein where you go for work uh what kind of combinations you can choose to wear for conferences for meetings for everyday routine work also not only on the stage so uh yeah i'll take you to a very interesting session today and um let me just share the screen first Yeah, so as usual, we will begin with uh, a good icebreaker because I think uh, it's, um, you know, it's it's nice to start with some good icebreaker. So what we're going to do is you are going to use your browsers and um, uh, just the question that you see on the screen, okay, uh, it says what does appearance signify in public speaking? Right. So what you're going to do is you're going to open www.menti.com. Use your browser either on your phone or on your laptop. Um, go to www.menti.com and use the code which you see on the screen. Right. The code is 7558052. You'll find the same question there. And uh, you can uh, answer like in two, three words, like uh, you can use your answer two, three words as in every participant can type in three words, three different words. It may not be like a sentence, but uh, what does appearance signify in public speaking is the question. So is it okay for you all to go through menti.com or if you want, I can even share the link in the chat box. That's the code and let me just try sharing the screen so that we know what you uh, all are typing in.
Yes, you can see the live thing on the screen also, what people are typing in. Okay, interesting words I can see there. Great. Okay, I'm waiting for more words. Fantastic. Now, the word confidence you see in, you know, the, um, I mean, the font is the biggest. It shows that most of you have probably written the same word, right? So, accordingly, Menti shows you um, that that's the maximum used word is confidence. Fantastic. Yeah, so we'll just start reading them. So impression of the speaker, depending on the occasion. Yeah, so it depends on what kind of forum you're addressing. Uh, accordingly, your appearance will signify for what you are. So for example, if you're just about there to uh, receive an award or uh, just give your introduction or separately give a speech, if you're the presenter, if you're the host, everything will, uh, you know, accordingly differ. Okay, so yeah, depending on the occasion, school of thoughts, someone has written school of thoughts. Um, so how would you justify that? Like, uh, depending on the question that we have put across, if, if anybody who has written school of thoughts, would you like to explain why have you written that? Uh, because I'm not understanding the context of uh, uh, you writing that. If you can help us understand. Okay, it's okay. Uh, so Grace, someone has written, yes, absolutely. Shoes, shaving, etc. Yes. So very important because that's a part of your personal grooming. And uh, I think I, I will be majorly covering this today also. Uh, appropriate color. Mm, yes. So, you know, when it comes to body language, of course, it is covered for you. But then um, I don't know whether I mentioned you the first day that, you know, body language also has different dimensions. One of it, which is, uh, uh, you know, uh, related to color. So related to color, also people in the audience would relate depending on what color you're wearing. You know, some people just like a particular color some people don't like a color even it depends on the speaker some colors make your mood some don't some make you feel dull right so all that uh connect yes attitude clothes hair personality accessories reliability speech tone body language preparedness professionalism okay dress code gesture power very important presentation, background of the person, first impression. Uh, again, a lot of people, it seems, have written first impression, attitude and confidence, the maximum. Okay, and confidence happens to be the maximum written word, right? So uh, fantastic. I mean, thank you, first of all, for participating in this activity and coming out with your uh, points. But uh, let me just interpret what can be school of thought. So uh, I think it is, again, depending on the thought process that you have, probably, uh, if I'm not wrong, if, uh, if anyone can correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, everyone agrees. It's probably uh, your background, your thought process, your, you know, what's going on in your mind. I think all that signifies uh, you know, uh, how you dress up and be on the stage. Okay. So, okay, great. So thanks, first of all. Uh, okay, Manisha has message more on the perspective. Yeah, I think you're talking about the same thing, Manisha. Yes, uh, Sripad, you have raised your hand. Yes, I, th I think uh, by school of thought, they meant that some people believe that uh, it's not what outside that matters, it's what's inside and clothes should not matter in judging a person at all because it's like judging a book by its cover. However, on other hand, some people 
uh, thing that our brain uh, always judge on first impressions and appearances. So uh, close does matter. These are two school of thoughts. I, I yes. have not written that school of thoughts, but uh, I could guess what that person would uh, be thinking yeah absolutely absolutely so when i'm going to talk about first impressions this is what i was going to uh, say that you know there are two sides of the same coin uh, like you said you you may not judge people by what you see but then um, okay let me come to that slide and i'll talk about it uh, because that's something which i really want to cover and uh, and it's very important for everyone to know because that's where the confusion uh, is you know related to first impressions so yeah this is what we are going to cover today uh, that's the agenda of the day which is first impressions personal grooming uh, dressing for men uh, for women and last we'll have question answer round so when i'll be doing the dressing for men um, i want even the women to be very attentive and uh, you know you may also ask questions related to it because tomorrow when you are on that stage or sometimes you can be on the other side in the audience maybe judging or uh, giving points or anything like that you should be exactly knowing how a well groomed um, a person looks like doesn't uh, matter which gender it is okay so i want both of you all to listen to both the sides i mean even men today you all should be listening when i when i'm speaking to the ladies about their dressing and grooming okay because it's it's very interesting and one should know even even in your personal life it will help you a lot okay anyway so uh, yeah so coming to power of first impressions uh, firstly yes uh, it definitely makes it more impactful if you are able to create that you know that bang on first impression especially on stage the moment you walk in there you know uh, now it depends sometimes you're walking in you know on the stage from the wings uh, behind sometimes you're walking in from you know taking the steps and then coming on top of the stage so your walk also would matter uh, your overall presence and because everybody is just waiting for you to start speaking using the mic or the podium or whatever it is in that particular time when you're coming uh, on the stage that also will matter a lot of people may uh, you know, have interest in you depending on the way you come or sometimes they may lose interest just because uh, the, the walk was poor or the confidence was not there or your appearance was not that appealing. Okay, uh, appealing in the sense impressive or just right, uh, just just uh, apt for the occasion, I would say, okay? Uh, positive, of course, we definitely look for uh, people who are positive on the stage, right? I mean, you don't want to get those vibes which make you feel awful and long lasting. So this is the answer for your um, uh, question, uh, Shripad, when you said that, you know, it's both the ways. So what happens is, even if we say that, no, we should not judge anybody, but there is something called as your subconscious mind right your subconscious mind is not in your control you can't say that okay i will not judge but trust me your subconscious mind does that job in seven seconds the moment you see somebody your conscious mind may tell you what you said before that let's not judge let's let's meet that person let's listen to him or her and then make a judgment perfectly okay that's what we also do when we consciously feel about something but there is something called as the subconscious mind on which you have no control so even if you feel that no 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 we are not like really judging the work is already done in seven seconds okay and that can't be changed because what happens is once a particular impression is done in your mind people do manage to change it but it takes a little longer Yes, so it's better to create a good impression, but at the same time, genuine one. The moment you try to create a fake impression, so there are many people who would walk on the stage with a lot of confidence, very good appearance, but the moment they open their mouth, everything gets over, right? So your first impression shouldn't be just with your appearance. It should be even with your work, even with what you speak, even People should notice uh, your overall uh, package, right? They should see what you all, uh, what what you are all about. 
correct the problem happens is we just try to create uh, that first impression in a way that we put our best foot forward just for that moment kyunki 2 ghante ka class hai ya 1 ghante ka class hai to best you know sabse best hona chahiye but jab real time mein when we come across that same person we change our mind because we thought that oh that person was something different that day and look at him or her now that that impression was wrong probably fake okay so you should be promising yourself that if you're walking on that stage one day with all that confidence and with a very impactful appearance then you might as well uh, stick to it every time you meet the same kind of people you should be able to stick to the impression that you have already created okay you can get better but not the other way now right are we convinced now with first impressions what do they mean and how impactful they can be yes anyone wants to share their thoughts on this or you have any questions please go ahead sure yes but do you agree to what i said to everything what i said yes okay great so let's let's straight uh you know start with your grooming um okay i can see some messages in the chat box great okay so when it comes to grooming what do you think is grooming first tell me that what is grooming all about and why grooming what's what's so uh, i mean do we really need to be groomed all the while that is the first step for the first impression first step for the first impression okay well said prag what else so here we are not participating in any beauty pageant right but we are still looking at grooming as an important factor when it comes to even public speaking correct so grooming is something related to again building that trust um in the person who's looking at you okay um yeah so bhaskar has messaged how you dress in the impression and mindset of people absolutely so well groomed person usually is admired is generally preferred to be around okay so automatically your thought process changes about a person who's very well groomed be it his dressing be it his overall outlook uh, everything right uh, also another very important part is when it comes to grooming um it it will not happen overnight okay it it will take some time so the transition ideally should be in a way where you take time to change and so that it becomes a habit for you okay so grooming definitely um your your confidence will be very high when you're a well groomed person because you won't worry about oh what will people say what are they thinking about me or um you know anything like that you will be generally very clear that you know you you've dressed it the right way you know that you have groomed yourself the right way so you will never have that baggage in your mind that how what are people saying you don't have to actually care but then it's for your own self also right so it it gives you that confidence so now starting with personal grooming uh, we will touch upon um you know men and women both of course uh, we'll start with the hair first okay so when i say hair and when it comes to men uh, the moment your hair touches your collars behind okay that's a sign that you come to know that you need a haircut okay so you need to go to the salon the moment your hair touches your collars behind or maybe touching your eyebrows in front okay that's a sign for men especially that you definitely need a haircut okay but you will always have um, you know exceptions um there are many people who can be exceptions having a little longer hair as men which is okay if they are able to still carry it off if they are confident enough to you know wear a ponytail and go on the stage it's okay right but the confidence has to be there to carry off that look okay obviously you can uh, if you if you take example of dr kalam you can't go and tell him that oh your hair was never well groomed right i mean he had long hair right but can we can we even think of doing that not at all because what he has achieved or where he is uh, what an icon he was for the youth okay uh, for the entire uh, population of the country i would say or for the world so you can't touch these people when it comes to you know their hair grooming so 
not necessary that everyone is a, uh, uh, you know, we have Dr. Kalam over here, but um, you never know who's going to turn into what, right? So make sure even if that person is pretty young and still having long hair, you can't judge that person just because he has long hair is not well groomed. So if he manages to, you know, still, you know, carry his personality well off and he's doing his work well, I think it is fine. So I remember the student uh, long back in GMCS, you know, when I was uh, taking a session in Pune and uh, I had the student who had this long hair, okay, and he used to come with a ponytail to class. So I had a word with him in the break time and he said, ma'am, you have to cut your hair and you know, I don't want to cut my hair. So I asked him, okay, you tell me the purpose. I mean, why are you growing your hair firstly? So he told me that he was a guitarist. Okay, so he used to play guitar. He was into music and he wanted to kind of balance his passion and his profession both. So he was doing good with his CA studies as well. So he said, it's okay, right, ma'am, if I can be a good CA still with long hair doesn't matter I mean I'm even pursuing my passion towards music which is right I mean so there will be always exceptions uh, you know you, you can't just totally put a underline there that no growing hair so men you all can go ahead depending on your style quotient but to be on the safer side I would say yes a short smart haircut is always um with without any uh, uh no one will say anything to you okay so yeah make sure you groom your hair coming to your facial hair again if you have beards or mustaches it is absolutely okay to have it but make sure that you know exactly how to trim them or shave them you know on your own also you need to learn these um, uh, ways and means of grooming your hair at home so not necessary you get time to go to salons especially if you have a very important event where you have to travel and then go right on the stage in like just two hours of time then you may not get time to go to a salon and uh, help yourself out right so these are the times you should be very good at self-grooming okay and nowadays you get these kits for men you know for grooming kits and like they have these shavers and trimmers and whatnot so make sure that if you have your beards or mustaches you know how to trim them well so that they look neater okay so that's very important again after a certain age uh, i'm sure the men here will agree with me um this is a normal human body tendency that you start uh, getting hair on your ears also right as a particular age we cross uh, especially for men okay so uh, that is also a time you should be very careful about you know even grooming the extra hair on your body I mean especially your face okay so this I, I'm sure you you may be finding it very silly right now but it does make a difference okay so when you people are senior and you come across as uh, you know uh, whatever designation you are you need to look like a thorough gentleman so to look like one even on the stage or in general you have to keep these small tips in mind is what I feel right uh, so that was about your hair of course uh, avoid coloring your hair uh, like green and blue or something like that uh, don't take a chance of going funky with your hair especially as chartered accountants I think people expect you to look your part in a particular way right so if you have to cross that line you have to be very careful um, now coming to the ladies Obviously, your hair is your crowning glory, something that you really look after, something that you like, okay, and um, yeah, something that you can't hide actually, okay, unless and until you're wearing a hijab or a burqa, you can't hide your hair. So when you go on stage up there, it's very prominent that your hair is seen, okay? Uh, you can't hide it. Even if you're going uh, in front of a bigger audience, uh, like I said last time also, sometimes there are LCD screens, uh, you know, all over. So it's not that the people sitting behind can't see you. Uh, because the focus is on you, you are seen very properly. So you have to ensure that your hair is very well done. So what is well done hair? Okay, there is no such set rule that you have to keep your hair open or you have to always tie it. Okay, but the way you do it is more important. So for example, if you have your hair open, they need not be falling on, uh, you know, uh, your forehead or on your cheeks, like disturbing your face structure. Okay, another thing is make sure that you don't, uh, you know, so a lot of ladies I see, make a puff okay now a puff doesn't suit everyone it depends on the face cut that you have accordingly you have to 
manage to make a puff. So for example, in my case, I have a very wide forehead. So if I make another puff on top, it gives a very broader look. Okay, so I can't manage to have a puff on my hair. So something like that. So you need to study your own self in a way where you know exactly that does a puff suit you or not. Similarly, um, if you're tying your hair, try to tie it very neatly and not in a shabby way. So I see a lot of ladies, um, you know, they have this habit of having long hair, keeping it open and just about they're going to oh, go on the stage and they feel, oh, it's it's open, so let me tie it. And they just roll their hair and put a butterfly clip up there and they go on the stage. It's a bad idea, okay? Because what happens is it, it looks very, very shabby, okay? Uh, your hair should be neatly done. So if you're tying it, Tie it into a ponytail or a nice bun. If you have really long hair, learn to make a nice bun out of your hair, okay? Because it looks very formal to look at, right? Uh, again, in your case, you may color your hair uh, lighter or any shade that you like. But of course, don't go very extreme with bright colors or blue or green or something like that, okay? So you have to look after that. Even the accessories that you use on your hair should be neutral colored, as in don't match your dress and your hair accessories so for example i'm wearing a red blazer i need not wear a red hairband or a red clip or something or anything red on my hair obviously right so it, it looks as if you're from school okay so now that you've become a professional you have to look like one so make sure that your hair accessories are of neutral colors also okay uh so that was about your hair uh, a lot of ladies ask me is it okay to put oil in your hair okay when you have to present yourself you know bigger forum or is it is it presentable or not so now this is also depends on some ladies uh, still look very presentable after wearing i mean having oil in their hair and some just don't okay so you have to decide that on your own whether you can step out of your house when you have oil in your hair are you looking proper or not okay so it's it's very personal to each one of you Right. So that was about your hair. Any specific questions you have, please unmute yourself and feel free to ask uh, because I'll keep going on and on, on like this. Uh, make sure you you disturb me if you have a question. It's absolutely OK. Right. So that was from my side about your hair, of course. Um, yeah, Ria, please go ahead. Oh, ma'am, I have a question. Like if you have long hair, we can open it. Yes, definitely. You can open it. But again, good that you asked this question. If you have longer hair, you, if you're opening them, you have to ensure that they are in good shape. Okay, so uh, you can definitely have a good shape. It can be straight or a little U, okay, or some kind of little layers down there. But ensure that there are no split ends, okay, because a lot many times I see women with long hair, they just want to leave it open, but they don't care how is it looking. Okay, so if you have long hair, you want to keep them open, you have to ensure that they are looking very proper. Okay, yes. Uh, another person has raised hand, but uh, yeah, Shrifa, yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, hello, ma'am. Hello, ma'am. Do you have hello. any tips for curly hairs for uh, men? Like uh, yeah. curly hairs are inherently, uh, you know, uh, uh, termed as shabby or, uh, you know, unorganized. So, you know, you can't do much with curly hairs so any tips for that yeah so i think nowadays you get these gels these sprays or gels which help you like set your hair proper it is also separate for men and women so if you go to these uh, uh, shops for cosmetics and stuff they will help you out with this because i i remember checking this out uh, with one of a friend of mine who was having really curly hair and uh, but let me tell you one thing especially for girls I think girls are in fashion so I mean a lot of girls nowadays I see they try to make their hair curly you know so with men of course it is a challenge but trust me it's it, it is actually giving you a thicker hair growth which is a good sign okay in the long run you will never go bald you know bald or something like that so it's, it's it's a good thing to have curly hair but make sure that yeah you can use these certain products if you think that that they are not manageable and I think the uh, so I know a lot of men who have curly hair in my I mean, personal life as well. And that's what I also ask them. So they say that they usually have to go for a haircut very soon because the moment they uh, the hair starts growing, uh, it grows very fast and it looks very big on the head. So that is what a challenge is. So I think that is one thing you can do and use these uh, 
gels that you get in the market. There are a, a certain products that you get for this. Yeah. Uh, there is someone else also. Yeah, Uncle, please go ahead. Hi, ma'am. Uh, I just wanted to learn ki, um, how do you address graying of hairs, baldness of hairs, and men and everything like that. That also happens. So, uh, is it uh, you have any view on that? Like, uh, I'm good with like we should. I think we can carry the weight. Is happening. Absolutely. You know, so yeah, yeah. lot of men. Um, you know, they they still look handsome. I think. Uh, see, uh, what happens is it's about how you carry it off. Uh, yeah, yeah. I know, again, in my personal life, I know a lot of men who are uh, extremely like they're bald, but they still look very, very handsome. They look absolutely presentable. Okay. So it depends on how you take it. Um, so uh, you can obviously go for various treatments that are available. But if you're not comfortable doing that, still, it's okay. I mean, it is just okay you to accept yourself the way you are and still look confident. That is the challenge, okay? Because the moment you start believing uh, people, uh, body shaming or saying things like that, you should not start believing in those things, okay? But if you know that your work is good, your confidence is good, your hair doesn't really play an important role. It's just that your grooming is important. So uh, whether any kind of hair you need to ensure that it looks neater and presentable. So uh, that doesn't really make a difference, even if uh, you have less hair, okay? The, the idea is to keep them well groomed and look neater as much as possible, right? Right. Yeah. Yes, so anyone uh, other than anybody else also has a question? Okay, so let's move to the second personal grooming aspect, which is, your nails okay now you may feel that ma'am what nails i mean stage pe kisko pata lagta hai nails kya hai and all that so in general also it's it's not a, a great sign as gentlemen especially to have grown nails okay so make sure that you don't have nails grown so i come across a lot of students especially who are uh, men and they have that one long nail you know and just one long nail and then they say that wo bahut sare kaam karne ke liye kaam aa jata hai you know stapler ka click kholna hai ya kuch bhi karna hai uske liye kaam aa jata hai but trust me that's not an excuse a gentleman can give okay so if you're a thorough professional you will ensure that you have your schedules in place and you will cut them off okay so you make sure that you don't have grown nails because like i told you when the focus camera is on you you never know what people are actually observing about you okay so it's not only on the stage when you are a speaker there most of the times it happens that as soon as you finish your speech people you know either uh, catch up for a cup of tea or something and that's when you really come across very closely with people so they are going to see you yes your appearance will make a difference how many how much ever good clothes you're wearing uh, good speech you have but the moment they see even one aspect of your grooming is wrong so it's it's an image breaker actually so make sure that you don't grow your nails okay coming to the ladies obviously i don't have to say this to you uh both the ways i mean you can grow your nails if you wish to and if you don't want to um it's absolutely okay right so it's not compulsory to grow nails but if you want to grow them then make sure that again uh, it it comes with a lot of organizing skills. So I come across a lot of ladies with, you know, chipped nail polish. Okay, so if you have nail polish, make sure that it is fully there or it's not there. Okay, because the moment it's chipped, so do din din baat to nikalna shuru hi ho jate, usko nikal dena baat zaruri hai. Because even that is seen, you know, that is, that again talks about you as a person that you're lazy. You're not bothered, okay? So make sure that even these small things are taken care of. Don't use colors which are very aggressive. Like, don't use black, okay, uh, for for maybe your stage presence or in your formal wear also when you go for work and all that. Try to use more subtle colors, more um, nude shades like that, okay? If you were confident carrying red or bright pink, you can go ahead, but make sure that you're not matching it with your clothes. So, for example, if you're wearing a pink color top, then you don't have to wear a pink color nail polish. Okay, then you probably, if you're wearing something white and gray, and if you wear a pink color nail polish, I think it will look great. If you're wearing black and white, and if you wear a red nail paint, it will look great. 
Okay, so you need to sometimes manage this kind of a contrast, which will probably look good. So avoid neon shades and all that stuff on the stage, because you may feel that oh, it will attract a lot of people's attention. But trust me, it's a big image breaker when you go with those very bright colors on the stage up there. Okay, so avoid that. And uh, yeah, so that was about your nails. The third thing is your teeth. And this is common for everyone that make sure that your teeth again, doesn't look yellow, red, or whatever, you know, like your teeth should be neat. Uh, because again, that's something that you can't hide when you're speaking, right? So it creates an impression again about you. People will um, probably come to know about your bad habits. So avoid, um, you know, uh, doing that because that's something that you can't hide. And nowadays people are wearing masks though, but I'm typically talking about you presenting on the stage as a speaker. So, you know, anyone is going to look up to you as a CAO, you're speaking on the stage they want to know everything about you they want to just get impressed by you your personality your speech your credentials everything okay so teeth is also an equally important part of your personal grooming last but not the least is your makeup so obviously this is only for the ladies which makeup so on stage you don't have to wear a very flashy makeup and go up there even no makeup is absolutely okay, right? Like you can just go without any makeup, but then you have to ensure that you look absolutely presentable without any makeup, okay? So if you want, you can just wear very light makeup, just maybe a little kajal, a little good lipstick or a blush or something like that. A workwear makeup, how do you generally wear? Similar kinds, okay? So it's not that you're going to go and somebody is going to shoot a film out of you that's a different thing but even in general when you're addressing people in a bigger forum as an audience uh, definitely the spotlight is on you definitely everyone is looking at you so you have to ensure that you look your part you stand out in that crowd the the mere reason that you're there on the stage and not anybody else is there that means you have that kind of you know power to stand up there so you have to create that impression so if you're not okay with any makeup it's okay but make sure then you're not you don't look like as if you've got up from the bed and gone on the stage okay then you have to ensure that it is still very neater a look okay so don't put any flashy mascara and lots of eyeshadows and stuff like that but a very basic makeup i think would help you enhance a little bit your look you would just look your part that's more than uh, important okay so uh, as in when you start really doing it on stage you'll get a better idea of how you come across maybe when you look at your own pictures or your own videos looking uh, uh, at yourself you'll come to know okay let me work on this let me work on that and that's how you get it right okay so yeah so I feel makeup for me I think it's uh, it's very important because I, uh, being in the grooming and etiquette, uh, uh, you know, zone, I have to talk about it. I might as well be myself groomed. Yes. So I, I definitely like to wear very light makeup, but yes, I do. Okay. I, it gives me a lot of confidence too. Anyway, so moving ahead. Now that was about your personal grooming. Okay. Uh, I will now start with the dressing part. So first for the men, of course, and then I'll go to the ladies. And then towards the end, we will do the accessories and the shoes also. Okay, so um, if no questions so far, we can move ahead. Yes. Okay. Great. So starting with shirts, okay, we will go step by step with your dressing. And then I'll give you all an overall picture also of how good combinations look like. Okay. So now starting with your shirts. Obviously, when it comes to shirts, I've written certain pointers there. We'll go one by one with those. So colors and prints. Okay, now starting with the colors, there is no such rule that you can't wear a particular color. But of course, now if you're going on stage to present something, you'll definitely not choose a bright red or a bright yellow or a bright color. Okay, or a parrot green or something. So you'll avoid those colors. What colors you can wear? You can either go for very pastel shades like light blue or any any light green lemon you know peach or if you're fond of darker colors then you can definitely go for navy blue you can go for dark brown you can go for uh, maroon you can go for dark bottle green you can go for a royal blue okay so there are many colors which are darker yet very 
power packed i mean they just look very very fab okay so you need to choose your colors accordingly what you like to wear uh, if at all you choose any kind of print okay so in the picture you see a printed shirt which is uh, striped okay now striped shirt also always remember this is even for your general office wear uh, stripes is definitely very very formal but the moment the stripes start getting thicker the thinner the stripes the formal it is the thicker the stripes start getting the more casual it starts looking okay so if you all are able to relate to what i'm saying so cotton shirts the material cotton which you use and if you have thicker stripes on your shirt that will make it look more more towards casual okay and if you have to look at extremely formal go for thinner stripes if you want to wear checks same rule applies the smaller the checks on a formal material of shirt the, the formal it looks okay the bigger the checks see bigger checks looks good no doubt about it all men when you all wear checkered shirts it looks very very smart but i think it looks better on a pair of jeans or maybe on cotton trousers or chino pants right because that fabric in cotton looks better with that you you getting me what i'm trying to say yeah so maybe in office also for your friday saturday wear choose to wear your checks which are bigger okay but generally from monday to thursday or even for your public speaking and stuff like that go for if you like to wear checks go for smaller checks as much as possible okay uh, so that was about your colors and prints obviously no embroidery no, uh, recommended on your shirts for your formal wear no embroidery no full patti no designs hearts and arrows and stuff like that please avoid all that just go for plains or stripes a good white shirt is a must have in your wardrobe okay white can never fail i think it looks fab on every gentleman who wears it okay so white is something you know i always feel that you should have two white shirts one for normal wear if you want to wear it you know any second day you know in the week's time and one you can keep separate you know especially for special occasions if you want to wear it so white maybe don't go for it very very pure cotton stuff because it it catches crease very faster okay so try to have a mix of a little um, what do you say thoda sa matlab synthetic and cotton ka mix hoga so i think it will help you manage it for a longer time okay uh, so yeah that was about your colors now coming to your sleeves obviously uh, for a formal wear always full sleeves are recommended correct we do not um you know generally when you look at somebody standing on the stage you expect that person to be in full sleeves because the moment you fold your sleeves it gives a semi formal or a casual look okay so that's okay when you are in your in house meeting inside your own firm hardly any outsiders are there no clients around are there so it's fine to fold your sleeves and work in your own comfort zone but the moment you come out there on the stage or even in general when you're meeting clients and stuff make sure that your sleeves are full okay um uh, coming to collars uh, so there are different types of collars even in shirts okay so make sure your collars actually are always in sync with your face cut so if you have a broader or a very very round or a bigger face don't go for absolutely small collars because that's not going to be in proportion with your face cut okay similarly vice versa if you have a very thin face and a very long uh, neck and a thin chin and then you wear this big collars it's not looking going to look good at all okay so try to wear those standard classic pointed collars which you get which is great okay and if you want to wear those button down collars sometimes collars have those two buttons down here that actually is good because when you wear a tie and all that it generally keeps it very intact and it generally goes very well with your blazers and stuff okay so you choose your collars accordingly um coming to buttons um okay now why am i talking about buttons is um you know the fitting of the shirt really matters here so i see a lot of men when they stand their buttons are closed and the moment they sit the buttons start opening up right so that's again an image breaker make sure your shirt fitting is just your fitting it you don't have to wear a very tight shirt see because when you go on the stage your entire focus is on your speech 
you want to focus on what you're going to speak, what people are asking you in the audience, or maybe how you're answering. But if you're too bothered about, oh, it's something that is wrong with your you know, sleeve, it's very tight towards the elbow, or you know, you know, the concentration can go for a six. Okay, so make sure that you tuck in your shirt in a way that the buttons are intact in sync with your, you know, the belt buckle and the buttons should come in one line. Okay, that's how your buttons should be looking like okay so fitting is of course important and short pocket so short pocket is there for the design of the shirt it is not for storage okay especially when you go on stage make sure that your short pocket doesn't look like as if you filled stuff like earphones and uh, uh, you know coins and uh, pen drive and whatnot okay so just keep it empty at the max you can keep is a pen probably okay or a pair of specs also would look nicer but don't fill up your shirt pocket with stuff okay because i i have seen this a lot of men doing it but it's not advisable at all okay so that was from my side about shirts and before we move to trousers if you have any questions about shirts you feel please feel free to ask yeah All good? I think I covered mostly everything. Yeah, but in case if you have any questions. So uh, yeah, ladies, you need to have some little more patience. Let me finish the dressing with the men and then I'm going to straight away start with y'all because in your case, I have, I have to even cover Indian formals and Western formals both, right? Okay, uh, Ankur, you have a question. Please go yeah, ahead. Uh, Ma'am, where, um, where can formals can be appropriate? Like uh, proper jeans, t-shirt can be proper for uh, what kind of occasions like that? I've seen few speakers wearing it. Like uh, if you see Tony, uh, Tony Robbins, like he's a good speaker. He wears a cap and uh, he wears a t-shirt and something like that. Or sometimes he's casual. So, I mean, uh, I just wish to learn a few speakers and some are very formal and things are like that also. So, if, uh, I mean, uh, what occasion can, uh, I mean, if it's an informal meeting, definitely a formal thing may not correlate. Like just if you have some connect to uh, yeah. different kind of presentations and what can match that kind of a, broader like uh, dress outlay like this then each t-shirt can match with what kind of an occasion like that if, right if right so usually it depends even on the audience see what i feel is whenever you are on the stage especially not only on the stage even when you're presenting in an office or something like that you should be generally one shade above the the audience okay so for example if the audience is in um, shirt and tie already then you probably will have to wear a blazer or a waistcoat at least a third layer on top of it okay but if the audience is say uh, college going students okay there you can you can probably be in a short and a tie okay because there you're a little uh, uh you know one step above the, their dress code so for them to look up to you there is something more but now again with the same breath i would like to say some people like to connect with the audience okay so they feel that let me be a part of the audience by looking like them so what you said, in certain cases, there are people who go absolutely casual on the stage, right? But then the, the, that forum has to be like that. So for example, as chartered accountants, if you're, if you're like addressing students, okay, who are very, very young in age, you can definitely go in casuals, okay? Just for that matter that they will connect better with you. They will, they will relate to you much better. But sometimes the students being the audience also, they expect you to look... Like, you know, like whenever I've uh, interacted with so many GMC students, they always say that we really look up to people who come in suit and tie and we also want to become like them. That's what they say, right? So it depends totally on the forum, Ankur. Sometimes you, uh, if of the who kisi ne aapko bola, okay, upar ja ke kuch present karna hai, and you have to do it, obviously you don't have time to change then you can still feel confident in your jeans and your shirt and all that, right? You can look as cooler as you want, but then the confidence has to be there, okay? You should be able to own the stage even with whatever, whatever you're wearing for that matter, okay? So it, it, it matters. I mean, I remember being a teacher, my first ever job uh, in Bombay when I was working, and there was this uh, huge event by WizIQ, Holics, um with IQ it's, it was a huge event of 75 schools participating it was in Baidas Hall in Mumbai Parliament and uh, I had taken like 
200 students from my own school from Malar and uh, three days ka wo event tha, barish ho rahi thi and all that you know was going on I was wearing a simple uh, short kurta with a pair of trousers and good shoes okay like I used to wear those formal shoes for work uh, so they suddenly called up all the teachers on the stage you know just for a ramp walk and some kind of a pepping up for the students and I got the best dressed teacher award there okay now I had not even planned something like that I didn't even have those kind of clothes probably you know but it was just the presence on the stage with, which mattered or the way I spoke for whatever introduction that I gave so sometimes people can you know your focal point you can decide where you want people's attention to be okay so it's absolutely okay to wear a cap and feel absolutely cooler and casual with the students you can connect also like that but if you feel that no you need to set an example maybe they're also looking forward to look absolutely formal so for example in my case when i take grooming sessions i can't go casually dressed right but if i have to go for a picnic with the students i will not go like this i will definitely look like them right uh, so i hope i've answered your question ankur yeah uh so vidhi i will answer this question when we come to the accessories part if you're okay with it yeah for watches and all i will cover it when we're talking about accessories great so coming to your trousers now again your length your fitting and your colors so we'll start with colors in fact so first thing first you have to uh, have these five neutral colors so when i say neutral these are those color of trousers which go with all colors of shirts okay so starting with black obviously if you wear black then black okay um, gray brown beige and navy blue okay i'll repeat black um, navy blue brown beige and gray okay these are five colors which go with all colors of your shirts Yes. So do not uh, struggle in buying too many trousers. I have seen men who have like three black trousers, three gray trousers, and they keep collecting stuff like that and wasting their money. Okay. Instead, focus on what you really need. Okay. And then you can graduate to more colors like, you know, olive green or wine color or shades of gray or shades of beige and all that stuff. Right. I did not mention white. Yes. I did not mention white. Why do you think I did not mention white? So white, again, informal material, white trouser is a big no-no. You're not a don, okay? You're a CA. Yes, you don't have to uh, wear white trouser and white shirt and wear a sone ka mala and go on the stage, okay? Not at all, right? So white trousers, see, it looks good, but probably the material that you choose for your white trouser can be more cottonish or more linen kind of a stuff, which you can probably use as a business casual, okay? That would probably look nicer. You're getting me what I'm trying to say? And then, like I said, after you have these neutral colors, you can go for more colors. You can go for striped trousers or checkered trousers and stuff like that. Okay. Again, your fitting of your trousers should be just right. Nowadays, you see a lot of trend of wearing those narrow trousers and stuff. But trust me, it is just a trend. Do not follow the trend. Make your own style quotient and stick to the classic. Okay. Classic style is obviously the straight cut. Simple, straight cut, formal trousers will never fail. They will always look very good on any gentleman. Okay. Whatever height, size, body shape you are, it will always look good on you. But the moment you choose to wear the trend, okay, narrow trouser pen line, but you are not even bothered, you know, where are you going? I mean, that's okay to look in the magazines, right? For models, but in daily life, for office wear, try to stick to straight cut, simple good fitting trousers okay and of course the length need not be so long that it touches the floor it need not have those you know like kind of pleats down there uh, avoid that too and it should not be even above your ankle okay so it should be just right okay um so that was about trousers again your fitting is important make sure you don't put a big thick wallet back there in your trouser pocket because it looks really awful i see a lot of men wearing very tight trousers and they use a thick wallet it, it's a big image breaker okay your wallet is also an important accessory make sure it is sleeker it, so your entire look has to be you know complementing each each and everything that you're wearing okay that's very important uh so now coming to your ties again 
see there is a uh, so tie is something that is your focal point on your dress okay the moment you look at a person's tie that that talks a lot about that person okay so uh, use it as your style quotient again so when i said focal point this word basically means that you know when you do a bling test for example if you wear a tie and stand in front of the mirror just bling 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 and stop the first thing you see is actually your tie okay on your dress and trust me men when you people wear tie the first thing with people will also see on your attire is your tie okay so choose your tie as well now again the the length uh, of the tie should be idly you know just the tip of the tie should touch the top of your belt okay just right so it should not go beyond the belt it should not be above the belt also and not obviously you all know but what kind of patterns you can choose or designs you can choose so for example if it's a very very formal event then go for stripes because stripes look extremely formal okay and if it is a semi formal you can go for uh, plain ties so plain ties also look good as a formal wear depending on what color it is of okay and otherwise printed ties generally look a little semi formal they are not casual but a little semi formal so dots or prints any prints would look better on a plain shirt but go for a striped tie if you if you have to really create that bang on formal impression on somebody okay and uh, once in a while you can really wear a funky tie if you're going for an event to talk on the stage to a very uh, you know funky kind of a crowd student crowd hai to your tie will again talk a lot about you like i said okay so it depends on which occasion you are going for again ties may colors also can be maroon can be a good pink a nice mauve purple navy blue um, you know all that so these colors really stand out royal blue yellow okay so they really really stand out on your attire so that power dressing jab hum bolte to yahi hota hai power dressing instead of sticking to a simple gray color tie so see gray is a very classy color but a little mistake in choosing the wrong gray can make you look 10 years older you agree yes so a sim a very sad looking gray will make your age look elder okay but if a classy gray classy gray would be more of a silverish gray you know lighter gray the better it will look okay so that is about your ties now your third layer can be your blazers or your waistcoats again the fitting is important make sure your uh, blazers are not hanging down there and they're not very a uh, loose on your body okay it should be the fitting should be very good to look at so when whenever anyone looks at a gentleman they look at the fitting of the third layer that they are wearing so this adds an authority any third layer will add an authority okay be it a waistcoat be it a blazer okay so don't go for very fancy looking blazers for your public speaking stuff go for much more um uh, you know formal looking so go for a good navy blue go for a good jet black uh, or black with stripes you know thin stripes looks absolutely formal okay so you can choose your colors of blazers that you like to nowadays a lot of uh, collar patterns and all are in fashion you can definitely go for it but let it look absolutely formal okay um yeah so last thing is your socks right and your socks again is very very important when you wear socks you have to ensure that your socks have to match your trousers yes so the moment you wear uh, whichever color trouser 19 20 ka farak is okay right so if you're wearing a beige trouser make sure you wear a beige socks okay if you're wearing a blue navy blue trouser navy blue socks gray trouser light or dark gray socks black trouser black dark gray trouser also black navy blue trouser also you can wear black absolutely okay but don't wear contrast anything contrast and nowadays you get such fancy fancy socks even for men please avoid wearing them because uh, they don't really look very formal okay because on stage you may feel that how do people come to know what color socks you're wearing of course people come to know it people definitely notice right uh, ankur you have a question madam sometimes black color and blazers become very common what's the next best, best color yeah so navy blue like i told you navy blue you can even make a combination like you know with a navy blue blazer beige trouser and a white shirt will definitely rock it okay so black of course is very very common you look like a lawyer most of the time when you wear black so black may choose the jet black or go for like i said thin stripes 
पिन स्ट्राइप्स जिसको हम बोलते हैं उसमें भी बहुत अच्छा लगता है ब्लैक कलर ओके एंड नेवी ब्लू ऑफ कोर्स और शेड ऑफ बेज प्रॉब्लम ग्रे इज ऑल्सो गुड कलर बट जैसे मैंने कहा ग्रे में यू हैव टू बी वेरी चूजी इन चूजिंग द राइट ग्रे आई मीन यू हैव टू डेफिनेटली सो इफ यू आर प्रॉब्ली यू नो वंस यू क्रॉस द एज ऑफ फिफ्टी फिफ्टी फाइव दैट दैट टाइम इट्स ओके टू वेयर अ वेरी formal or a sad looking gray because it will cat that age you will be able to carry it off but in this age if you if you wear a very uh, dull gray you will look older is what i'm trying to say okay this uh, this also goes for the ladies actually okay so i will come to the ladies once i finish with you people and yeah so that was about your socks okay so i have started from your shirt to your trouser to your socks and your tie and after i finish the dressing with the women i will come to your accessories and shoes is that okay yes but then you please be there when i'm talking to the ladies ha huh? don't run away <laughs> yeah because i think all the ladies were really attentive when i was talking to you all great so now we start with your dressing men uh, uh no sorry we we start with the ladies so oh i i i still have some nice pictures for you so i'll just take you through these slides okay these are some nice combinations which i found uh, you can just have a quick look at it i'm just rushing through these slides for you okay so this is again a three piece suit is also wearing a waistcoat a pocket square also that will be coming as a part of your accessory later on when i speak about it okay and uh, your shoes and belts and all that i will cover later So see, very very good combinations. Uh, you can see, right? It's the same combination almost, but just with the tie. See how different it is looking suddenly. Okay, so it also matters, right? So this is how you cluster. Like you you when you decide to wear something, you should exactly know which bag, what shoes will you plan to wear, which trousers, which belt, which watch. You know, if you if you start. uh thinking about it then only you will be able to manage your wardrobe in a way where you don't have to open your wardrobe and say that oh i don't have anything to wear okay so next time when you plan to shop shop only what you really need okay don't just unnecessarily keep buying things right so now can we start with the ladies yes yeah so now uh, for ladies obviously we have both the sides we have your uh western formals as well as indian formals in case of men i did not cover indian formals because you won't be wearing a kurta and going on stage and delivering a speech right but in your case uh, it is both yeah we we definitely wear sarees we wear kurtas and we also wear western so i'll quickly cover the western part and then come to the indian formal part so when it comes to your shirts you don't have as many rules as men had okay so you all are the lucky a lot you can wear uh, plains you can wear stripes you can wear checks you can wear prints you can wear florals you can wear polka dots uh, you can wear all that okay all kind of prints but again uh, here i would like to add here is that if you're wearing prints like for example florals agar aap pehnte ho to bahut bade bade flowers nahi pehnne hai short ke upar okay it's in and keep it very subtle as much as possible so if you're wearing shirts keep them um i would say you know smaller flowers or subtle colors brighter colors bhi chalega but chote flowers chote designs would look better okay and plain shirts mein you don't have to worry different materials different patterns different um uh, you know fits nowadays you get those crop shirts which are again very formal so you have to wear high waist trousers with crop shirts the formal ones they still look very very formal okay so it depends on what you like to wear and normal these simple formal shirts with collar and buttons this may be v neck hai is may v neck nahi hai normal hai so if you're planning to wear a scarf then you should ideally choose a v neck because the scarf looks very pretty inside a v neck but if you're wanting to wear a longer scarf then you can go for this kind of a shirt also okay and tucking in the shirt not tucking in the shirt is not compulsory uh, you should be comfortable when you walk up there on the stage or even in general uh, if you're not comfortable tucking in your shirt don't do it okay but trust me when you are wearing a typical full blazer suit combination then you have to tuck in your shirt ideally ideally it looks better uh coming to your trousers again there are no rules for you you can wear all 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 colors on this earth okay and in fact 
जैसे मैंने when I told the men that you can't wear white, in your case you must have a white because you can wear so many different colors and prints of tops with your white trousers. Yeah, so it's it's actually like a, a neutral color for you, which you can match up with so many shirts and tops. Okay, so nowadays in formal trousers you get as many patterns like plazos, you get uh, culotte pants, you get cigarette pants, you get uh, what not. ओके सो अगेन प्लाजोज में भी क्या होता है जब प्लाजोज फैशन में आया था एवरीबडी वॉज वेरिंग प्लाजोज राइट बट ट्रस्ट मी प्लाजोज लुक गुड ऑन पीपल हु आर टॉलर ओके एंड इफ यू थिंक दैट यू आर नॉट टॉल इनफ देन यू प्रॉब्ली वेयर अ पेयर ऑफ हील्स अलॉन्ग विथ प्लाजोज बिकॉज इफ यू वेयर प्लाजोज यूर शॉर्ट देन यू लुक शॉर्ट अ विथ फ्लैट ओके फ्लैट सोल्स के साथ सो अगर प्लाजोज पहनना है तो आपको थोड़ा सा हील पहनना जरूरी है ताकि वो फैब्रिक का फॉल अच्छे से आए एंड इट लुक्स फैब ऑन यू ओके दैट्स द होल आइडिया कमिंग टू द थर्ड ऑप्शन दैट यू आल्सो हैव इज स्कर्ट्स ओके व्हेन इट कम्स टू वेस्टर्न फॉर्मल्स स्कर्ट्स इज एन ऑप्शन इफ यू आर कम्फर्टेबल uh only then so again the length can be longer it can be knee length it can be below knee length above knee length whatever it is above knee length hai to you have to wear a uh, stockings as well right so for a formal wear you do not wear netted stockings and flashy kind of stockings just simple plain stockings is good to go okay so it depends on which occasion you're going for if if you're comfortable wearing a skirt you a lot of responsibility comes along with wearing a skirt that you should know how to stand walk sit you know all this is very important to look lady like it should look absolutely elegant when you wear a skirt so do not try to choose a skirt with flare okay a little flare is okay but too much of umbrella cut or the flare makes the skirt look casual okay or absolutely semi formal you're getting me yeah so uh, if you choose to wear skirts for your formal wear let them be uh, straight cut okay coming to one piece dresses also nowadays it's very much in fashion and a lot of people are getting so many options uh, nowadays on mintra and so many different shopping sites that you have you get lovely prints and uh, plain sh- plain ones also so these kind of uh, one piece dresses you can pair it up with blazers floral blazers jackets or just uh, half sleeve um, uh, what do you say sleeveless jackets or something like that or accessorize them with a scarf or you know any neck piece or something like that okay so you can really play around with these kind of outfits um in your case when it comes to blazers again there are no rules because you people can wear floral blazers you can wear plain blazers you can you know wear soft blazers so when i say soft the material which is more like flowy or a little um uh, what should i say not very stiff enough that also you can wear right so it can be plain so in uh, i think in in brands like bossini you know, or bossini there's a brand in which you get very soft blazers they're very easy to wear on an everyday purpose or especially on the stage because you don't want to be like standing like a robo over there so especially with a very stiffer material you feel very uncomfortable so go on go try out soft blazers also you or sometimes any kind of third layer like longer ones or you know absolutely longer uh third layers which you can wear even on your kurtas and stuff okay so you should have a good collection of stole you can make a collection but just buy something that you really need it should not be lying in your cupboard for no reason okay that is very important so now coming to your indian formals that was all about western formals okay now coming to your indian formals again very important is um so see indian formals we generally wear for festivals or for you know going otherwise for any other social occasion but when it comes to your office wear or public speaking or anything like that you have to ensure that your indian formals are more subtle to look at okay so if you're wearing plains great if you're wearing checks still good stripes very good if at all you want to wear kurtas with prints or sarees with prints then you go for again smaller prints like kalamkari hota hai patola prints hota hai block prints hota hai yeah but go for smaller prints on your kurtas don't go for very flashy prints on your kurtas for your work wear also nowadays you get these dori patterns not nowadays it's an old time dori pattern jisko hum bolte hain na jisme knot hota hai neck line ke sath you're not supposed to wear them as a formal wear okay the moment you have 
have a dory or a bow or something like that, uh, it makes it look informal. Okay, so for your office wear, avoid any flashy golden silver kind of stuff on your kurta and all that. Keep it the, the simplest form. It will look much more presentable and much more formal to look at. Okay, more subtle to look at, I would say. Right. Uh, if at all you want to add a collar, I think that's a great idea to add a collar to your formal kurtas. Even if you don't want to add a collar, you can probably have some accessory, you know, something like that. What I am wearing today, I don't I am not wearing a collar top. It's a simple round neck top. So I, I thought, let me wear this neck piece. OK, so it will it will definitely uh, pep it up. OK, is what I'm trying to say. OK, so you can probably wear an accessory or a scarf or anything like that. Okay, if not a collar. Okay, uh, again, your sleeves need not be always full. In, in case of your kurtas, you can definitely have a little pattern sleeves, three fourth full is also okay. Sleeveless, not many organizations are comfortable, uh, uh, you know, uh, as a dress code with sleeveless. So that, that depends on which uh, forum you are in and uh, you should take a call accordingly, right? Uh, the length of the kurta can be, you know, knee length or even below knee length it's absolutely okay um but again make sure there's, there's no umbrella cut or anarchy or anything like that okay just keep it straight or a line that's the best to wear for your office wear or for your uh you know formal wear on the stage and stuff like that okay so keep it a line or straight cut yeah that that's the most um i would say the the formal where to look at okay uh, other than this your pants beneath your kurtas need to be pants and not churidas the moment you wear churidas so churidas is something that hugs your body right it's tight yeah and wape niche again pleats are there jo churiya form ho jati so that is again a sign of wearing something semi formal or casual and churidar generally hosiery material mein hota hai ya lycra material mein hota hai so that is not at all counted in the formal Okay, so for formal, go for straight cut, like the ones which you're seeing it in the picture. That's absolutely okay to wear. Okay, nowadays you very easily you get all these kind of pants, very easily you get in all the shops. Okay, so you can also start with the neutral pants first and then graduate to more colors as and when you need them. Right, but neutral colors, if you have to buy it, you don't buy it. You know, sometimes uh sustainability is also important you don't have to just keep on buying stuff even you don't need it and still we complain ki kuch nahi hai ke liye. you know that is the problem with all the ladies i think it's it's very normal to happen yeah how much ever i say i also have this problem <laughs> but now i'm working on it that if i really don't need i should just give it away or just recycle or do something else with it okay but yeah i definitely would not uh, recommend you wearing churidas under your kurtas because that looks semi-formal or casual okay dupattas is again a fantastic third layer to wear if you want to wear dupattas you should exactly know how to carry it off see especially on the stage when you're going if you're wearing for example a chinon or a chiffon dupatta or a georgia dupatta what happens with the material is very flowy so it keeps slipping down from your shoulders right so might as well have it in front okay hanging in front or see you can't clip those uh, dupattas because they will tear the material is very uh, soft okay if you want to wear a dupatta on stage or even in your normal office wear try to go for cottons or silks because they are much more stiffer and they stay you know so usko pleat karke bhi aap ek shoulder pe le lo and acha sa ek brooch laga lo upar se it will it will change the look of the outfit okay that same suit will look so pretty just because the way you have pleated the dupatta you you're wearing a nice brooch on top nowadays you get so many beautiful brooches brooches as in even your sari clips can be used as brooches you know that so uh, you, you have to miss you know you have to just use your things the right way you never know nobody will come to know that it's a sari clip sari clips also looks like brooches right wear it here instead of clipping it from inside with a safety pin and tearing those nicer dupattas of yours yeah so work on it accordingly uh so yeah now coming to the saris again lot of women i see prefer wearing saris for work or on the stage absolutely a formal uh wear again to go for but don't wear any traditional saris for example or leheria sari or a bandit sari or um, kanji varam ye sab functions mein acha lagta hai. it is not uh recommended for your office wear or for your formal wear okay go 
for crepes, go for cottons, go for uh, silks, right? Uh, cottons, again, I would say, depending on how good you are handling a material like cotton, because it so you have to really, if you have a longer day, avoid wearing cottons because it's very difficult to manage, okay? But I think crepe is a great idea. Again, your sari blouses, same thing goes for your blouses. No dory patterns, no bows and all that stuff. No deep necklines. Just keep it nice, formal looking, classy blouses and saris, okay? So as in when you want to buy saris for your workwear, you can go for prints like I told you. Same thing, kalamkari, block prints. Uh, plain saris, bigger borders, but not too much of work on the sari, you know, zari and all that for your work. Okay, avoid that, right? So now let me just show you a few pictures. Okay, I have a few pictures like I showed it to the men also. So these are some really nice combinations that I found, you know. So this is a good stage wear. See, it's simple black, maybe it's a kurta or a tunic kind of a thing. And what she has done is she's worn a nice accessory with it which is actually looking very good even on a simple black okay other picture is again a good blouse which is checkered very formal to look at right no deep cut nothing like that and a simple plain sari with it see it's it's really looking so formal this is also another uh, i i generally take these pictures from pinterest okay so you get a lot of ideas on pinterest which is a wonderful site to look at uh, you all must go and just visit that site for really good ideas and combinations that you all, you all will get there. Okay, so this is again a fantastic combination to wear. See, a kurta is like a bangala with, uh, you know, the same color buttons. See, it definitely looks formal. Even the sari that you see here, simple sari, but it is really looking so good, right? Again, this is like a formal, uh, the left-hand side picture is a Western formal outfit, but again, a very very uh, sleek one yeah to look at it's not it's not looking like a party wear yeah you can definitely wear it on stage or even at workplace okay and again this look at look at the combination it's yellow and off-white it's so very good yeah so when you collect saris you have to keep in mind where are you going to wear them and accordingly choose your colors right Again, this is what uh, different kind of pants, like, you know, below your kurtis, you can even have these. These are not plazos, but they're like still loose uh, down there. And a good dupatta, see a plain kurta, a good bag. Okay, so all that, you need to match it up like that. This is a simple formal wear, a good formal top with a trouser. This is a narrow trouser though, but she's wearing flat soles with it. So it's looking good. Okay, you can even wear heels for that matter with it. Right. Uh, this is again something very nice that I found. Uh, you can carry this outfit very easily, whether it is Western or Indian. See, the way she's put her dupatta, it looks like a scarf on a simple plain kurta. It is still looking so good. Okay. So it, the idea is not to wear everything that you have. Whatever it is, just try to pep it up in a way which looks very attractive to look at. Yes. These are some more. Uh, so this is, again, I really love this white. The whole outfit is white. Just the dupatta is printed. You know, any color dupatta you can take with white. So if you have a white suit, I think you can wear it on a stage. You can wear it for a formal event. You can wear it for a conference. You can wear it for so many things. If not a dupatta, you can probably wear a jacket, a half uh, half sleeve jacket. Half sleeve, as in the sleeveless jacket, sorry. Or any other jacket you can just pair it up with. Okay, so think about it. I mean, I'm just giving you all options to look at, right? Um, so yeah, that was all about your dressing. Now I come to accessories for men. But before that, any questions, ladies, please, uh, if you all have any questions with regards to your dressing, uh, please feel free to ask. Yes, Ria. Some color of blazer for ladies. Color of blazers. Yes. Oh, okay. So don't have a black. Okay. Because again, black is like so simple and so common. Okay. Like what Ankur said, in case of men also, I feel right. But for ladies, you can actually, you know, like uh, I love to collect blazers too. So have as many colors, you know, you can wear pastels if you're, if you're fond of pastels. So make a style quotient of what Ria is all about. She always wears these nice lighter color blazers. Or you can have a mix of everything, you know, sometimes florals, sometimes checkered, sometimes plain, 
dark, light. Now, it all depends on what color shirt you're wearing underneath. Okay, so you need to have a collection slowly. Go slow. Don't repeat the same colors. So once in a while, you can buy a good sky blue. You can buy a navy blue, a, a royal blue, a good maroon, the one which I'm wearing now, a beige, right? A, a pista green, a dark bottle green, you know, all that. So you will get n number of variety, a good peach. So for your formal wear, you don't have to really worry of, about the colors. In fact, you all can go beyond imagination when it comes to, you know, colors for your blazers is what I feel. Right? Yeah, any other question, ladies, please feel free. You all should please ask questions. I really would love to have questions. I think there's something in the chat box. Dimple is saying, can we wear more of traditional formals than Western women? Absolutely. So this is totally your choice. That's why in your case, I covered both. Okay, so uh, it is totally your style portion, what you like to wear and how comfortable you are in whatever you're wearing, Dimple. So it is absolutely your call. There are so many ladies who only wear Indian formals and they still look so classy. There are some ladies who only wear Western formals, right? So if you're wearing Indian formals, you should know how to match it up. You know, buy lovely dupattas, you know, have nice bindis, a good collection of bindis. So don't wear bindis like they put it in the Hindi serials. But uh, simple, nice, big bindis, they really look, they, they just, they look lovely, you know, and the way you accessorize your dresses. Right, so it's absolutely okay. There is no such rule, my dear. Yeah. Uh, Dimple, you have asked another question up there. Uh, half sleeve striped shirt. Um, so that's for men. Was that for men that you were asking? Okay, so half sleeves striped shirt for men, it again depends. For an office wear, it depends on the dress code of that particular organization. Some organizations do allow you, depending on the weather sometimes, or if you are totally in-house, like it's a smaller firm and you're not having too much of interaction with the clients, then it is okay. But I would say full sleeves is definitely always very formal to look at. Yes. Any other question? I don't think so. <laughs> Anil has written a fair, funny message there. Uh, Jenny Shiv asked, can you repeat colors? This was for what? Uh, with related to? Jenny, I'm sorry. I missed your question. Long time back, you have asked it. Can you repeat colors? That's That was for, I think, when I was talking about shirts, probably. It's okay to repeat colors, you know. That's, again, something that you you will develop as your style portion. So you don't have to buy 365 colors for an entire year. <laughs> you can definitely repeat them. And, uh, yeah, so it was for pants. Okay. Yes, definitely you can repeat colors. Absolutely. That's why I said go for the first five neutral shades and thereafter as and when you get comfortable you can keep collecting like shades of grey is a good idea, shades of beige is a good idea, okay, uh, different, uh, but don't have like three black and three grey, same, same color trousers, no, there's no point, you're wasting money in that, okay. Um, any other question with related to dressing, then I go for accessories and we're left with only shoes also after that, so we are well in time. Sure. Okay, so I'll go ahead. We start with the accessories for men. Okay, when it comes to your accessories, again, um, simple rule is, of course, with your belts, you have to always match it with your shoes. So, again, on stage or not on stage, even for your workwear, make sure your belts and your shoes match. Okay, so the moment you buy a pair of new shoes, ideally, that's the time you should also buy Else, okay so that you're sorted and especially if you have to travel a lot for your work and for seminars and going and conducting sessions always have these uh nowadays you have those double color belts right which are easy to carry for travel that you can wear a black or a brown depending on what color shoes you're wearing okay your watches again need to be um you know don't wear those 
big chunky watches right for work wear try to keep your watches more subtle okay um a smart watch is also formal okay but make sure that your watches don't have diamonds and you know all that stuff right so avoid that kind of stuff for your formal wear that's okay in your social occasions when you wear it okay uh vidhi you have a question saying light shirt and dark pant and vice versa good yes definitely so a lot of men ask me that is it okay to wear a black shirt once in a while of course you can wear it but then which color trouser would you wear is it lighter gray okay or a lighter beige you will wear it with a black shirt and if you're wearing a light shirt definitely a darker pant but not definitely so for example if you're wearing a uh, a white shirt you can still wear a beige color trouser and a navy blue color uh, blazer on it it will still look good okay so it depends on how you make those combinations with it right they should look power combinations that's the idea okay so that was about your watches coming to cufflinks again depending on the designations that you hold if you start uh wearing cufflinks again it, it it is absolutely formal to wear it okay on your sleeves so a lot of shirts come with a uh, you know the, the shirts have a system where you, wherein you can fit your cufflinks in right so when you buy your shirts make sure you have one or two shirts wherein you can manage to wear your cufflinks so aisa nahi hona chahiye ki cufflinks hai lekin shirts nahi hai uske liye right so accordingly manage your shopping um sunglasses i'm all uh, i've just put a picture because obviously you'll not wear sunglasses on the stage and go but just in case for your office wear and all that stuff if you're wearing sunglasses make sure they're not not very flashy go for simple aviators or classy stuff don't go for too many sunglasses just one or two is good but good ones okay and uh, yeah so pens also i think they talk a lot about you as a person pen is also a very important accessory on you know when you wear it in your blazers or when you carry it just for signing or things like that make sure you have a good pen okay and uh, no flashy bracelets no wearing you know big bracelets and hanging bracelets and stuff like that no bigger chains and big lockets and all that okay for you people the lesser it is the better okay and also um, no tattoos to be seen i think uh, uh, don't ask me where to put it now obviously don't have your tattoos here on this part of your palm because you can't hide it don't have tattoos on your neck okay again you can't hide it so avoid that and uh, even no balis like i mean as men avoid wearing uh, balis for style because that's not cool at all okay um for ladies uh so accessories for men i i forgot one more thing is your bags okay again when you carry your bags let them be very formal looking okay if you if you are carrying any kind of a backpack for a laptop then you carry it in your hand and not on your shoulder okay because that looks like a school boy that's okay when you're on a bike or something when you're traveling but the moment you enter the office premises or for any auditorium or set up like that you you carry your bag in your hand okay holding it like that so that is also an important accessory make sure your bags are not very flashy also right um any specific question you have regarding your accessories men then i go to the ladies no questions anything you want to ask i think i covered most of it but still for ladies i think the best thing is the mantra is actually less is more the lesser you wear the more it looks okay so for example i have seen lot of ladies wearing everything that they have chota chain bhi pehna hai lamba chain bhi pehna hai mangalsutra bhi pehna hai choodi bhi pehna hai bracelet bhi pehna hai earrings bhi pehna hai sab kuch pehna hai jo bhi kuch hai okay so do not do that the idea is to wear simple and um classy stuff okay anil you have asked a question could the key of car be hang to the buckle mm, no <laughs> uh no okay so you you should ideally have it in kept in your bag especially if you're presenting yourself in uh, front of someone avoid having your key chain hanging there okay uh, kenil you have asked can we wear gold chain uh, chain and ring okay is it two things right gold chain ring gold chain and ring yes okay so gold chain yes you can wear smaller thinner 
small locket is okay don't wear it like puppy da obviously right and uh, yeah uh, rings also not in all your fingers okay as much as possible because see that is something which catches attention it's like a distraction also at times right so keep it simple maybe one or two rings is okay obviously when you get married and stuff you you need to wear a ring there but uh, it's you don't have to wear like too many rings in your hands and all that okay because it is a distraction and uh, yeah good question anil uh, specs again make sure that your specs are not flashy so don't wear those neon color frames and stuff okay go for simple uh, specs frames okay they would definitely look very formal good question by the way yeah okay so yeah coming back to the ladies again uh, so pearls is a great idea stones is a great idea gold also if you want to wear chota simple jitna chota utna acha jhumkas if you want to wear jhumkas wear smaller jhumkas so for example if you're wearing indian formals go for jhumkas which are smaller on your work wear i'm only talking about work wear see for your social purpose you can wear anything that you like right but don't uh, if you're wearing big jhumkas and big your uh, neck piece it is too much to look at okay so keep it simple keep it classy is what the idea is okay and um, okay let me just okay i just muted everyone <laughs> anyway so sir yeah getting, sir is getting dress prepared as per your norms <laughs> 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 yeah i didn't understand yes, although so because he was speaking in gujarati so i didn't i didn't really get it <laughs> anyway so yeah so coming back to the ladies again so pearls is never going to go out of fashion right i mean they will always be ever green our ancestors also used to wear pearls and you can wear it on western indian formals both it still looks very good okay so ladies you can accordingly shop i mean you don't have to just keep shopping till you drop uh, it's okay to have less stuff but uh, simple to look at okay and uh, don't overdress basically so no hoops no danglers uh, nothing that makes sound so no pile and stuff like that for your office wear for your public speaking or anything because that attracts too much of attention there okay so scarves is a good idea to have it as an accessory any kind of a simple neck piece something like that what i'm wearing or a choker or something like that also on a sari or on a kurta it will look nice depending on the neckline that you are wearing also okay so you need to match it up accordingly i'm sure you all are very good at all this uh, but just i thought i should share these tips with you because we generally go wrong by wearing everything that we have okay so ek simple cheez yaad rakho jitna kam utna acha lagega especially for your work wear okay so any uh, specific questions your bags you can carry as many colors as you want but again don't carry flashy bags like gold and silver bags nowadays you get very fashionable bags but you don't have to carry them for your work wear okay even if you're going to a bigger forum for public speaking also if you're going in the auditorium hang a nice bag which looks formal okay if you have to at all i mean go on the stage along with your bag your bag shouldn't be the center of attraction there okay kept on the podium or anywhere like that okay so keep it subtle as much as possible okay now coming to the last thing is your shoes um i can see a chat message what about wearing black or red thread in hand or around neck by men and women as well so anil generally what happens is if we have to wear any kind of a thread for religious purpose for example uh, it is absolutely okay right uh, we don't have to break our customs and traditions in any case but again make sure that they don't uh, you know seem to be the the attractive thing on your outfit okay you can definitely wear full sleeves and have the dhaga or whatever over here but you don't have to have hanging jhumkas with it or घुंगू विद इट ऑब्वियसली आई मीन काफी सारे लोग बहुत कुछ एक्सरसाइज कर देते हैं उसको फंकी बना देते हैं बट डोंट डू दैट ओके इट्स ओके टू वेयर इट फॉर योर कस्टम्स एंड ट्रेडिशन एंड समटाइम्स सम ऑर्गेनाइजेशन विल गिव यू दैट लीव ए ना वाई डू थिंक सम ऑर्गेनाइजेशन डोंट अलाउ इट ओके दैट्स बिकॉज दे वॉन्ट टू कीप एवरी वन यूनिफॉर्म दे डोंट वॉन्ट एनी डिस्क्रिमिनेशन ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ रिलीजन राइट सो दैट्स वाई दे हैव दिस काइंड ऑफ रूल्स Okay, but make sure nothing is so you don't have to be very loud about 
you know, what religion you belong to or something like that. Because the moment you see a big locket, you know, with uh, something, I mean, people will feel like, whatever, right? So keep it simple as much as possible. I hope you have, I've answered your question. Yeah, so like for ladies also, it's absolutely okay to wear a Mangal Sutra, right? If you want to wear a Mangal Sutra on Western wear, then go for a smaller Mangal Sutra. Obviously, if you're planning to wear a blazer and a uh, shirt or something like that, and you wear a big Mangal Sutra, it will not match with it. Okay, but you can definitely wear a smaller Mangal Sutra. It looks very cute, right? In fact, you must wear it if you like it. Okay, so it's absolutely okay. It, it, you should be able to manage it. So I see a lot of ladies when they get married, uh, newlyweds especially, they wear this big chuda in the hand, the red ones, right? Or anything like that. It is absolutely okay. But then you plan your wardrobe because if you have to go for work for a year's time, even after getting married, then you probably have a lot of long sleeve kurtas with you, right? So every day you don't have to show that you're a newlywed. Okay, as simple as that. Okay, so you have to plan your wardrobe accordingly. Yes, it's, it's called wardrobe management, actually. Yeah, so coming to the shoes, we are almost uh, towards the end of the session. Yeah, good timing. Uh, so all these patterns that you see on the screen are definitely formal. But if you look at brogue and boat pattern, the corner most two patterns, they are more semi-formal, I can say, for your Friday, Saturday wear kinds, right? But otherwise, all these uh, even dessert to some extent it looks a little semi-formal but otherwise all these six patterns on top are definitely absolutely formal wear so again with your shoes so something which is the most important thing that they need to be polished they need to look cleaner neater as much as possible okay uh, because shoes is something that everyone looks at the moment you meet somebody a lot of people look at your shoes first okay so you need to ensure that your shoes look proper neat and clean as much as possible as a thorough gentleman make sure this is like a habit okay not need not be only on the stage but even otherwise it's very very important and the colors yeah so you can definitely a black is a must have a dark brown a lighter brown okay these are and once you're probably fond of shoes, then you'll probably start collecting as many colors. But then for office wear, restrict yourself to some, uh, you know, even a good burgundy is fine or a darker brown or a um, camel brown or something like that is also okay. Right. But then you have to uh, always ensure that your belt is matching. Okay. Um, yeah. So ladies, for you, I can make a whole PPT. But obviously, I can't do that today. Uh, so simple rule for you all to remember is, um, you know, all your toe fingers need to be together. Yes, that's a sign of wearing a formal footwear. So the moment you wear a chappal, chappal mein kya hota hai? Humara thumb or index finger separate ho jata hai because of the grip of the chappal, right? Now that makes the footwear informal. Okay, so if you're wearing a sandal for that matter with a buckle or, you know, with a belt behind or an elastic or something, it is still formal because your all five toe fingers are together. You're getting me? So any kind of a closed pair or a sandal, wedges or anything like that keeps your toe fingers together. They make the footwear formal. The moment you wear a chappal or a slipper or a Hawaiian chappal or Kolapuri chappal or whatever it is, it is not formal, okay? It is not formal. So trust me, um, this is what you have to remember. Yeah, next time you wear formals, you better avoid chapels, okay? Uh, so yeah, the peep toes and all this, all pump shoes, whatever patterns you like in your footwear, it is okay. But uh, like the last picture here down here, simple strappy sandals also look nicer. But buckle hai, isme chota sa hai, but still formal because again so make sure your nails are done properly they need not be pedicured they need not have any nail paint, nail paint but they should not look undone okay they should look nicer if they are seen seen like even even in peep toes aapke nails dikhai dete hai to wo clean hone bahut zaruri hai okay so that's very important yeah so that was from my side today and any questions you all have before we go to the feedback I hope there was some value addition today. 
with respect to your uh, you know dressing not only in public speaking but even otherwise i think these tips will really help you right yeah okay so um i'll just share a link with y'all right away and i want y'all to just put in like one or two words or maybe one sentence as a feedback from your side because uh, that will make me improve nothing else nothing else in my mind at all so let me just share the link with you just give me one second here you go there's a link in the chat box you can click on that and probably just write whatever you feel um i mean anything around today's session was a good takeaway for you what was your takeaway you can probably write that So if you click on the link, you'll see a small plus sign in the right hand side corner down there. You can click on that plus sign and start typing. Uh, writing your name or not writing your name is not mandatory. So even if you don't write your name, it's okay. If you want to write your name, you're most welcome. Are you all able to access it? Okay. I've shared the screen here too. You can see it accordingly. Okay, that's nice. In fact, I would really love if any more questions you have, please feel free. So we are on the group also. In case if you have any question even later on, you're most welcome to ask it. I mean, I'm there on the opportune group. So feel free to connect. Okay, y'all can probably even write it now or even later. I'll post the link on the chat box also later on in the group for people who have not written it now or maybe are busy. Uh, I can understand, but uh, overall, I think um, you can um, you can tell me that it was really good. Anyone wants to say something? I mean, especially when you were listening to the other gender stuff uh, what did you feel uh, did, did it add value definitely ma'am it was really a nice session and uh, we got some nice tips like it was a very detailing like you have covered even shoes watch specs everything almost you have covered so thank you so much for that thank you thank you so much Parag. I mean, it's, you know, in a two hour session, it's very difficult to collate everything possible because usually when we take up these styling sessions and grooming sessions, it takes really very long, especially, I mean, one on one, if you have to really address everybody, it becomes um, uh, very detailed. Uh, so it was a challenge for me to cover it in two hours. <laughs> that really was a is a very nice session. You have almost covered all the things yeah <laughs> thank you thank you Ruchi. thank you so much thank you thank you okay the good thing is that we can visualize that how we will look uh, in all these things yeah it's very important to you know do that i mean we all are working on it i'm sure um it's it's a matter of uh you know the interest that you have in yourself and if you really want to portray yourself as a confident person so like i said in the beginning how much ever your speech is good or uh, you know all your communication is good everything is fine but 
if you're not comfortable with what you're wearing and if you if you can really create that great impression with your attire it it's like an add on it's like an add on right and uh, always remember what i even said about first impressions you don't have to like judge it but it 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 people will still judge you okay so you can't deny that fact also right and it's difficult to like talk about grooming on virtual session because in one to one you can practically give the example Absolutely. But you have succeeded. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Great. Okay, so uh, I'll share this link again on the opportune group in case if anybody's left out can still post uh, their feedback. And uh, yeah, so thank you, everyone. One and point I have. Uh, yes, please. Uh, so uh, the same question I have uh, that uh, have we covered the uh, this appearance part in our MOOC test? The in our MOOC uh, test, uh, when we uh, physically meet at the branch and will uh, in the demo in the session. sessions. Okay, uh, so you mean to say uh, you uh, like what any... to wear, how to wear, how we can carry ourselves, like. Uh, okay. Because because so it mocks... is quite difficult to uh, understand in the virtual session because uh, though it was a really nice session, but uh, practically it it will uh, impact a lot. absolutely with you on that you know i have been taking so many sessions even practically and even i feel so it was very very challenging like i told you to uh, you know get those kind of images which will suit your profession and uh, stuff like that so yeah uh, in mock sessions i think yeah when you all will have mocks in the center probably we will be even able to tell you like what is that something you can improve on which colors you can probably you know choose to wear or not choose to wear or something like that i think we can surely incorporate that that will probably help thank you much thank you. most welcome great so thank you everyone it was really uh, kind of you to write such lovely comments and uh, um, be a part of the session and i could see you all were there and really attending it also <laughs> so thanks for that yeah so have a great thank you, uh, yeah have a great day ahead and um yeah so be in touch in case if you have any other doubts even in future you're most welcome to connect and ask okay thank you ma'am thank you yes thank you okay. ma'am okay yeah, bye let let's take a group picture i think i can't go without a group picture so whoever can switch on their cameras let's let's quickly take a picture these are some good memories i have with this batch also Oh this is lovely. I didn't know something like this existed. I think you have to adjust your cameras accordingly where your faces can be seen. Okay. Any more people would like to switch on their cameras and I'll get a nice picture. Yes, Mitesh is adjusting his camera and then we'll quickly take one picture. this is really good i mean i didn't know this uh, this uh, i think you have this idea in zoom too okay let me still take one riddhi you want to keep your camera on mitesh kahan chale gaye <laughs> yeah here you are okay smile everyone okay here we go thank you Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. yeah. Have a good day. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Have a great day, everyone, and see you soon. Bye bye. 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 bye.